from death. Christ came to deliver us from the fear of death. If you are able to handle fear, you have paralyzed the devil. The devil does not need invitation to go where fear is. Wherever fear is, it's just like when you are in the sea and there is blood in the sea. The sharks don't need an invitation to go there. Immediately they see blood, they will come there. In the same way, when the devil sees fear, he doesn't need... Fear opens the door to the devil. So stop being afraid of tomorrow. One day during my prophecy, a young girl walked up to me and said, hey, Prophet Eric, I want you to pray for me. I said, I can't pray for you if I don't know what you want me to pray about. He said, pray that when I marry, I'll give birth. I said, ah, how old are you? He said, 22. I said, go and renew your mind. Why are you afraid now that you are not even married? And you have not even read the age of marriage? And you are afraid that you will not give birth to a child. Renew your mind. You know something? Job's problem was not because the devil was powerful. Job's problem was his fear. He said, the things I fear are the things that have happened to me. But there is one key that Job had. Hope. Hope. The guy has so much hope. The wife told him, in all the account, that's another message against women. In all the account, Job was struck with sickness. His business collapsed. His children died. Nothing happened to the wife. So the wife comfortably walked up to him and said, curse God and die. The man said, you are talking like one of those foolish women. But the guy had hope. That, there was one time he made a statement in the Bible. He said that, I will wait for my appointed and he knew that his change will come. He was in a difficult situation, but he was hopeful that one day I will come out of it. Hey, it doesn't matter where the devil has put you. Be hopeful that one day, one day, you will come out. Even when Buko Mbanku was beating Aite powers, he had hope that there was somebody with a bear that will hit it and you will rest more. Give somebody a high five again. Tell the person, don't allow the devil to steal your hope. <laughs> it is very, 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 very spiritual to be hopeful. It's very spiritual to be hopeful. Wherever hope stops is where faith stops. Faith ends. Do you know that there's a scripture that says that he that hopeth shall never be put to shame. You know that. So a hopeful man. You know, I hear people say that there is nothing in hope. But, but ladies and gentlemen, it's not true. Your faith will be only as powerful as your hope is. Because faith only gives you substance things you have hoped for. You are hoping for. You see, because hope is future tense and faith is in the now. Faith brings what you are seeing as hope in the future into the now. So faith is what transports what you are seeing. So if you are not seeing, there is nothing faith can transport into the now. Our hopelessness is the reason for our helplessness. And I pray that today, you know, there is one woman that marvels me in the scripture, in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4, verse 18 to 37. That woman had a miracle child. She's called the Shunammite woman. The child died, and he told the husband, ask the young man to saddle a donkey for me. The husband has given up hope. There was a case I dealt with one time Doctors, doctors diagnosed that the baby died in the hospital. And the, the, the woman called me 
And when I was speaking to the man, the man was crying like a baby. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. You see, Berman, so, so, Berman, also, the Dina Chino, that's all. But the woman refused to give up hope. He said, Prophet Eric, it's my only child. It's my only child. I said, Madam, according to your faith, that child cannot die. Immediately, the doctor turned the back. The child sneezed <coughs> and came back to life. If the woman had given up, the child would have died. This woman told the husband, he told the husband, give me a donkey. The husband knew that the child was there. And even when the prophet saw the woman coming, he asked, is everything well? He said, all is well. That means that she was hopeful that the child would resurrect. Ladies and gentlemen, what Jesus Christ was telling Martha was that, be hopeful. Your brother is sleeping. In other words, don't give up on your brother. Be hopeful. Because Martha did not, Martha and Mary did not understand that the resurrection and the life was the one coming into their house. He that has a keys of life and death, he shuts and nobody can open. He opens and nobody can shut. He refused to understand that. Please be hopeful. I say, be hopeful. I've come to realize that your case is never closed until you close it yourself. If you refuse to allow your case to be closed, be hopeful. I said, be hopeful. Sometimes I hear testimonies of things people do. You know, one time on my birthday, I did a prophetic service in my church and I distributed stickers. And there was this woman who was looking for a baby so many years, took my sticker and pasted it on the, bo- on the bed and told the husband that today we must fulfill scripture. And told God that if that guy that stands before us is a prophet and somebody you have called, I put the sticker here. I want to get pregnant. And she got pregnant. I was nowhere there. The sticker does not have the ability to make people pregnant. But her hope that when she, he said, believe in the Lord your God, you shall be established. Believe also in his prophets and you shall prosper. I don't know whether I've preached this message here before. Faith is in three dimensions. You have faith in God, faith in his word, and faith in his prophets, in his men of God. Faith in God establishes God's agenda. Faith in his word provokes or commits the integrity of God. Faith in his prophet provokes his confirmations. I came to tell you as a prophet. A Baptist prophet raised up in the Baptist church. Bred in the Baptist church. Under the supervision of the best pastor in the whole world world. The Honorable Reverend Emmanuel Alatete. And I came to prophesy with my eyes open to somebody that I don't know where they have put you. I don't know where the devil has put you. But I declare that your case is not close. You, you, don't, you, 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 you don't sound like you, you, you have heard me. I said I declare that your case is not close. That case is open to your favor. I say it is open to your favor. I say it is open to your favor. I say it is open to your favor. About three weeks ago, a pensioner came to me and said, I have a case in court that has been dead 20 years. He said, last time we went to court, the, the judge strike out the case. I said, it cannot be closed. I said, I'm, I'm speaking to you as a prophet that the case cannot be closed. So go and appeal. He went and appealed the case. The day they wanted to hear the case, the same judge was the one supposed to be there. He fell sick. 
they adjourned the case to two weeks. He didn't recover. They replaced the judge. He looked at the case. The same day, he gave a verdict. Bam! Look, look, look. Don't allow the devil to see you crying. He has put you in a case and you are crying. It makes him very excited. Manyano. 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 But listen, 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 listen. Ah. Don't allow the devil to now. He may be squeezing you, but look unto what God has said. And you see, the main source of hope is God's word. Because he has said it, you believe. Ah, 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 ah. You, know, you know, Job says something. He says that when you make supplication to God as a full time, your latter end shall be greater than your former. So our source of hope is not based on the finance minister's declaration. Our source of hope is not based on Mary Kay. Your source of hope of getting a husband is not based on slick and Mary Kay makeups. It's not based on the fact that you wake up in the morning, you apply makeup in your face. Tarazo 1, Tarazo 2, Tarazo 3, then you apply polish. It's not based on that. The reason why this generation of people, our marriages are suffering is because people are hiding all kinds of faces and all kinds of things. So when you marry them and you had the honeymoon, in the morning, you begin to wonder, this, is this what you married? <laughs> One day I was ministering somewhere and the power of God was all over the place and there was a woman. I, lifted, I put my hand on her and she held my hand and I thought it was the power of God. No, no, she was protecting the weak. And me too, I refused to ruin my hand. When the weak fell, the, the anointing reduced from 90 to zero. I said, people are carrying things home. Somebody give God a shout of Tell somebody hope. Tell somebody hope. Listen, 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 listen. Next year by this time when I see you, I will not be able to recognize you. Because your life will so change. Your economy will so change that when I see you, I can't recognize you. There is a friend of mine, also, the guy, when I see the guy today, I say, hey, he finished school, no job. I give him money every month to sustain him. There were times the guy would be crying because no money from anywhere. The girlfriend was with her three years. He said, This is my bread. And no, now I would be born you know, my tea bread. This is your sister. One day I called him, Simon. I gave him an envelope. He's mentally allowed He looked at me uh, and said, Eric, I want to show this money back to you. I said, what will you eat? He said, don't just allow me. I want to show it to you. So he gave me the money. And comp- compassion rose up inside me. All my intestines rose up. And I said, I received the money, but I'm showing it back to you. I said, from today... 
your story has changed. You shall lack no more. He left my house, walked, and then saw a man whose car has broken down. And asked the man. The man was struggling. You know, this dad about people, when they grow, they don't know where water is. They don't know anything. So the man was there making phone calls and calling people to come and fix the tie. And this friend of mine asked the man, can I help you? He said, my tie. He said, do you have a spare tie? He said, it's in there. The guy went under, screwed the thing, and removed everything. And fixed the tie. And the man said, thank you. He wanted to give him money. He said, I don't want money. Then the man drove off. Then the man stopped and reversed back again. I said, young man, but why are you not at work at this time? He said, I don't have a job. He said, what is your qualification? He said, this is my qualification. He said, this is my card. Come and see me in the office. He gave the boy a UN job. Also, for if I tell you about this boy now, cars, buildings, I dedicated his third building about two and a half months ago. Third, third. He has a driver for the mother. The father is late. A driver for the mother. Right now, the girlfriend wants to come back. He came to me. I say, hey, that is a, a job's wife. Suck her. <laughs> Look, I, I am giving you, you see, he was my friend. I could have looked at him. I could have, there was one time he traveled to UN and I needed dollars to travel. And I said, I, I need dollars. He, he walked up to me, gave me an envelope of $5,000. 5000 in an envelope. He gave it to me. There was one time I, I was in the US. He held my hand. He said, every seat you like, pick it, I'll pay. I said, are you sure? He said, I'll pay. But if I had seen that he didn't have a job, he was hopeless. I would not have been enjoying that privileges. Listen, somebody may be next to you know how you treat the person now. Because God is the one that determines tomorrow. And you don't know what tomorrow holds for that person. So ladies and gentlemen, treat people right now. One day I was doing a prophetic service and one of the ladies, one of the girls that was very close to me, I saw that she had a boyfriend. Very young, just finished SS. I said, what's the name of your boyfriend? He was modeling. I already knew the name. I said, let me talk to that guy now. So I left the microphone and I called the guy. I said, hey, my name is Prophet Eric. The girl is my small girl in church. Today, I fired you from the occupation of having a relationship with her. If I catch you, you are in trouble. She was crying. Oh, Papa Derek, I love him. I said, you don't understand. <laughs> because see, GSS, the more you grow, the more you meet. There was one lady who was also close to me. She was going to get married. The guy... Hey, people, guys can do things. So. <laughs> I'm sure you also teach some things for your wife. <laughs> hey, the guy will go and visit the girl eh, and talk with the girl. And when it's 12 a.m., the girl goes to sleep. He will sleep in his car in the girl's house. Alpha, chocolate and pie and dresses of an aqua. I said, anytime the guy wants to take her to lunch, eh, she will buy, he will buy a new dinner dress. That was one of the things I have copied that I will use from them. <laughs> hey, 
I said, you give a gift to the girl, and the gift is a dinner dress. Wear it. We are going for dinner today. Charlie, the guy be seriously, highly romantic. But he was fake. That's why I tell young girls, when you have a boyfriend who calls you 14 times a day, he doesn't have anything doing. He called him, he's a clear indication that he's hiding something. One day I was prophesying, I asked one girl, your boyfriend calls you 14 times a day? Say yes. I say, when he calls you, there are certain questions he asks you. Odo, who are he? Who is there? I said, it's a clear indication that there is another woman there. Because he is calling her to know, he knows the distance between his house and your house. So when a woman is there, in order to play safe, not all men do that. I'm, what I saw is what I'm saying. He calls to know where you are. So when he knows that your house is at greater estates and you are in Tema, it will take you about one hour to get there. So he has calculated. Don't worry, him will fear. Then he's relaxed. Then he will misbehave that one hour and know that after one hour, the person there can vamoose. This young girl was going to get married. I said, the boy is fake. He said, oh, Brother Derek, I, lo- I love him. And that's the way girls behave. You are prophets telling them things. What they feel is what they are saying. And we are not talking about feeling. We are talking about the future. They went ahead. I traveled out. By the time I heard, they were married. So she was at the honeymoon outside the country in South Africa. And she called me. Oh, Eric. I'm sorry, I disobeyed you and blah, blah, blah. So I asked. My prophetic thing came and I said, I asked, where is your husband? He said, my husband just stepped out. I said, no. Your husband is with another lady in the same hotel. He said, oh, Prophet Eric, that is not possible. I said, okay, let me call you the room number. So I called the room number and I gave her Holy Ghost GPS. I said, don't use the front door. Use this door. You meet a cleaner there. Give some money to the cleaner. He will open the other door for you. He says, you will enter. She did it. He has gone to catch the guy. In other words, when they were going for their honeymoon, the guy also transported the girlfriend there. But ladies and gentlemen, faith workers by love. Galatians. That means that faith always goes with love. You see, because love is the motive of faith. It is the motive of faith. Faith does not, you see, God is not a Father Christmas. God is not a water dispensing machine. So, people think that they can just go to God, get things from God and abandon him. But God only moves on behalf of his lovers. He said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, blah, blah, blah. To them that love him. To them that love him. So anybody who is in love with God, oppressed in faith and is hopeful, that person will be victorious. Do you know that David never lost a battle? Because of his love for God. God even told him, don't build a house for me. But he told his son, because of my love for God, I have made materials for his building available. One day when God got angry with him, I said, choose one option. And he decided to fall in the hands of God. And God was killing. And he went to the trenching floor and, and, and wanted sacrifice. He, he told the guy, I can't give anything to God that does not cost me. People don't love God and they want God to do things for them. They don't love God. They think that God is for the Christmas. They come, God give me things. And they, there are people here when God bless me, them with one million dollars, you don't see them in church again. And because you don't have any love for God, God cannot bless you. God is looking for people he can bless. But 
people that love him. And I can measure your love for God by the way you come to church, the way you read the Bible, the way you pray, and the way you give. Faith works with love. Today, fresh love is coming into your heart. There are people who don't love God at all. There is no fear of God around them at all. They lie more than the devil. By just being in love with God. A lover of God. A lover of God. You love God so much. That people think you are a fool, but you are a lover of God. Hey, people who love God, pie. When it's time before worship, worship, and they are worshiping God, they don't mind that they can use their dumas and lie on the ground because they know that they are nothing without God. I don't know where I would have been if God it wasn't for God. I would have been dead by now. Every day I wake up with the consciousness that the the, the people who want me dead are plenty. But until God gives you up, they can't have access to you. That is why you need to love him. Love him. Rather than loving yourself. Love him. A man cannot love another person if he doesn't know how to love God. As a matter of fact, you can't love yourself if you don't know how to love God. Faith works by love. Because, see, if God wants to give you something, He looks at your intention and your motives. I, I, am I going to bless this person? Because, you see, there are too many people that are too proud for God to bless them. Because when He blesses them,